it's really a close matchup, and I think actually who wins the die roll is favored. That's my genuine belief. Uh, but here it looks like Emma has gone to five cards. Ooh. Yeah, five cards, keeping on five, it looks like. And I mean, I guess for being five, it's not the worst. Uh, BBD mm -hmm. on seven over there. And this time, last uh, last game for BBD, just could not find the big legend to reanimate. <laughs> right. This time there's a Grizzlebrand in hand. I actually wonder if we'll see him just skip turn one and discard it. Yeah, with your opponent being on five cards, that actually has to be kind of tempting. Well, it, it, it's kind of weird. I think I probably wouldn't, especially with the prismatic ending in hand. But I do think it's close. If we didn't have the ending, I think it's a lot more defensible to do that. So how bad does the prowess deck mulligan? Like, is going to five an absolute disaster? Um, Well, it's kind of interesting. My deck has, like, six divinations, four iteration, two questing druid. I think Emma only has four questing druid. But the real issue here is no land, no second land. Yeah, we're going to see a Lava Dart fired off just to do a little surveilling. I noticed uh, during our game, you did a lot of upkeep spell slinging to uh, to try to find lands, I think, mo uh, most likely with the Dragon Rage channeler, which was interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty common play pattern. I would have liked to see that uh, from Emma this game, but, you know, maybe she had a different one. Uh, the, the the problem is it's not exactly free to do that. If you draw a second land there, it's so much better to play Swift Shot Show Off. Oh, right. Yeah, there is a there is a cost to it for sure. So here we see another surveillance land off the top for BBD. And uh, I imagine we're going to see the, the prismatic ending Dragon Rage Channeler Showdown again. Hopefully it goes a little bit better this time. I believe it should. I, I think uh, there was a workaround mentioned in, our, in the Discord. Yeah. For the show so hopefully it, it works this time yeah float your mana first i think is the is the trick at the moment opponent uh so let's see we got a uh meticulous archive here doing some surveilling uh it's gonna be tough for uh, emma to get back in this game without hitting at least one land in the near future yeah very true um the the real issue with the prowess deck if you don't have your creature out a lot of your cards are just so much worse like Lava Dart's obviously incredible with any prowess creature or even questing druid in play. Um, okay. Abundant Har this is actually interesting. Emma was talking uh, during the last uh, match about how Abundant Harvest was a card she was pretty high on, and here it actually really paid off because it's a guaranteed land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in the Harvest spot I have Preordain, essentially, which is a similar card, but obviously not exactly the same. Yeah, yeah I think Abundant Harvest maybe is as close as you can get if you're not in blue, maybe, if you're just straight gruel. Mm -hmm. Now we've and seen Ephemerate. We have the classic combo, which I think is underrated in the deck of Archaeologist plus Ephemerate is actually very, very strong. I've compared it to Dig Through Time, essentially. That actually... I, I never thought about that, but now that I'm thinking about it, that actually makes a lot of sense. That is kind of Dig Through Timey. I wonder if we'll see that here, maybe. Uh, I mean, the archaeologist, uh, you could run out to fairy, I guess, but archaeologist seems better here. Yeah, I think the issue is uh, with your opponent doing nothing, you just want to progress your game plan as quickly as possible instead of tapping out for a Teferi and then like kind of having to decide what to do with the Teferi. And there's a, yeah, and there's a vengeance oh, in hand. So oh hitting boy. something like okay. those Atroxas, pretty valuable. Uh, so next turn, I think, is going to go pretty well for BBD. So, Ephemerate, too. Whew. No, uh, actually, BBD missed on the spell. You can tell because there's a plus one counter on Archaeologist. But I do not think he's very sad because there's literally two Atraxas milled. Yeah, so next turn, he can Gorio's Vengeance, the Atrax, and Ephemerate it, right, in theory? I think it will be less of a theory and more of an actuality if you, if you <laughs> ask me. Yeah, that seems that seems likely. So we see a questing druid here, or a, a fetch quest, I think, that Adventure Side is, to uh, to draw a couple cards, hit another land drop, but the prowess deck is just so far behind now. And I don't know, can the prowess deck actually beat an Atrox on the battlefield, like, no, realistically? No. Well, the only way is you have an overwhelming board and one of the cards is Soul Scar Mage. Because Soul Scar Mage lets you manage the size of the Atraxa. But no, I, I think this is pretty much a wrap. The, yeah, Emma's, from this hope position. Is, Emma's hope is that Brian doesn't actually have the Gorya's Vengeance. But we know, everyone in Twitch chat knows, uh, there's going to be a lot of swings next turn. <laughs> yeah, this. I mean, this is one of the reasons to play the 
the Goryeo's Vengeance deck is uh, we're going to see it right here with the Atroxa coming down super early in the game and just drawing a ton of cards and adding a huge lifelinker to the battlefield. And the problem is, like, I don't know, Emma might end up just scooping. I don't know if there's, from this position, if you can realistically fight in Atroxa. No, I I would say no. So here comes a Vengeance. Here comes the Atroxa. Here comes a huge lifelinker and a new hand of cards. The, uh, what Brian gets. Uh, all right, we see oh, a Grizzle Brand, Prismatic yeah. Ending, Sal oh, a handful of removal. Yeah, this this that's game a, is very over. That's a wrap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, if there was some chance of beating the Troxa uh, before its trigger resolved, there is no chance of beating the Sand. <laughs> And At least make... it tracks us a clock. It's going to wrap, if there's not a concession, yeah. it does wrap up the game quickly, which is nice. To make matters worse, uh, there's actually a second ephemerate. So that's just like really the nail in the coffin. Looks like we're going to prismatic ending to get rid of the Dragon Rage Channeler. Yep. So no creatures on the prowess side of the battlefield. And yeah, here's a big attack. Kiki attack for eight, probably. Yeah, I mean, you're gaining so much life with the Troxa. The, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Emma has the Slick Shot show off, but with two cards in hand and BBD at, what, 24? There's just, it doesn't do enough. And also, I think sneak in the extra point actually matters a lot because 15 minus eight is seven, which is conveniently a trap with power. Yep, so this sets up the, the kill next turn uh, with the Atroxa. Wow, what an uh, what an explosive deck Gorya's Vengeance can be when when things come together. The game one or the yeah. first match for BBD, we kind of saw the bad side of the deck where like it just really didn't come together and it looked very clunky. This game is showing the upside of the deck. Like when it does this, it beats mm -hmm. a lot of the decks in modern. And yep, there's a ephemera in the concession, and we are on to sideboarding. So uh, Jarvis from the Prowess deck, what does Emma have to bring in to try to fight Gorya's Vengeance here? Well, I think Emma alluded to this in the pre-show. Uh, she does not have any Graveyard Fate, which I think is a huge downside for this matchup. I'm playing Turn the Earth, which is actually really effective versus Grief, because you can flash yep. it back from your graveyard for one in a green. Uh, in the past, Prowess decks have played uh, Soul Guide Lantern, Tormod Script, stuff like that, but it looks like... Um, I think if I were Emma, I would just submit and try to Goldfish BBD. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, got to be the game plan. Like, is Pick Your Poison even even good enough in this matchup as a sorcery? Like, if it was an instant, I could see the argument for it. But as a sorcery, I feel like you're so far behind, even if you kill the Atroxa or Grizzlebrand. I think you could make a merit for Blood Moon effects, but not really for Pick Your Poison. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I play a lot of Blood Moods, and sometimes if a matchup's really bad, I just bring the Blood Moon because, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it gives me some <laughs> shot of janking out the game that I'm not going to win otherwise, most likely. What about yeah. from uh, BBD's side? How much how much changes from the Goryeo's Vengeance side, do you think? Well, he cited in all the Celestial Purges because he saw the Blood Moons, so he's going to aggressively fetch for a planes. He shaved a Grief and a uh, Gristlebrand, Touch the Spirit Realm, two Teferis, uh, for two Fatal Push and three Celestial Purge, which makes a lot of sense. All of the cheap spot removal is very good. He still has five big uh, doofs to reanimate with Gorya's Vengeance. Yeah, here we go. On to game number two, and Emma's on the play. Hopefully, you're going to start with more than five cards this game, I think. And this hand, oh, well, this hand's... Hmm. What do you think of this hand from the Prowess side, Jarvis? Um, so... It obviously, it looks somewhat appealing, but I think you should actually mulligan. Most of your best starts start with a one-drop creature, and yeah, yeah, it, it, I like that mulligan so much. It's exactly rewarded. This hand's quite good. You find your second land. I think if you find your second land, this is actually a turn three kill if you find your third land as well. And that's good because on the other side of the battlefield, it looks like we have a uh, Atroxa that might be coming down pretty early with Faithful Mending to discard the Atroxa and the Goryeo's Vengeance. Yeah, BB's Hand is quite good. He has the discard out in the form of Faithful Mending. He even has Solitude in case of things go awry. I, I think he basically has everything he wants except, I don't know, like maybe another untapped land that doesn't hurt him. 
Yeah, untamable ephemerate would be fine, I guess, to yeah. save the uh, Troxa. There's a grief, which doesn't look like it will probably do much at the moment. Grief is one of your best post Atraxa plays, actually, uh, because you tend to have too many cards that you can't use anyways. So just like unmasking them for two cards is a pretty good rate. You might as well. Yeah, you might as well pitch them because you're going to discard them anyway. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So we see a, oh, a fatal push on top, too, which I imagine. Well, actually, hmm. So you mentioned BBD needing a land. Is this fatal push worth keeping because it's good or do you have to get rid of it for a land? I think you're inclined to keep it because it costs less than two mana, essentially. If that was like another two drop uh, cantrip spell or something of the like, you would immediately bend it, I think. And I guess you have the Faithful Mending to dig for lands. We do see a pick, uh, pick your poison here. So at least one of those ended up coming in for Emma. But not a land, which is kind of unfortunate. Emma's hand really needed land number two to be explosive enough, I think, mm -hmm. to keep up here. Yeah, this is the one downside of the prowess deck. Like, you do keep a lot of one landers, and they often look like this. It, like, obviously, the one landers with like a cantrip or a bonnet harvest are totally fine. But this one, you you need to get a little bit lucky to win. But I I think I agree with keeping. It's just things didn't work her way this time. Yeah, especially already down to six. I, it's if it was on seven, maybe there's a there's an argument. But at six, I think you you kind of got to keep. So there's a land. It looks like BBD is just going to pass. Leave up the Faithful Mending and the Fatal Push. Is a land enough here? If if Emma peels a land, well, there is a land. Is this enough, Jarvis, to make this a game? It's complicated because if BB doesn't find Ephemerate, it might be, but it's still a way uphill battle because they'll be at 22. They'll have the ability to evoke a Solitude, most likely. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it It's really, really rough, I think, for Emma still. Yeah. So here's the attack for one, and it looks like... I was wondering if you tried to plot the Slick Shot show off, but it looks like maybe just a, a bolt here, get through some damage. Is this enough to force the Fatal Push, or is... I mean, I guess you gain so much life with the Troxa, just, like, reanimating that is so high value, it's hard to pass up. I think there would have been merit if Emma had used one more spell on the uh, Slick Shot or uh, on the Soul Scarf Mage to Fatal Push, because the life you gain from Atraxa is like set. It's not, it's not just like continuous without the Ephemerate. So doing it now opposed to later is basically the same effect. So we see the Faithful Mending going to be a Troxa pitch, and it looks like the Archaeologist will go to the graveyard. No land for B. Well, there's a land oh, for BBD. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so now, yeah, this this is going to go very poorly, I think, for Emma. So we see an Atroxa coming into play with haste from Gorio's Vengeance. See the trigger. Here's the cards. So I imagine Ephemerate's probably the, the game ending hit here off this Atroxa, more or less. I guess I there's agree. a picture poison, but still. There is the grief, as you said, which can take the pick your poison. So it, we're seeing the downside of pick your poison being a sorcery, which we kind of mentioned during sideboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't know exactly what the Troxic cards are, but we will find out momentarily. Honestly, I don't know how much. Yeah, there's uh, the ephemera. Well, uh, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that is going to be tough to be so with this hand jarvis do you pitch the fatal push to the grief you obviously ephemerate the trox i think but so you hold you, the fatal push or do you grief it you ephemerate first see what you get then decide i guess that's true you're drawing another round of atroxa cards here so so you might be able to pitch something less impactful than the fatal push here's a tech for seven bbd back up to 19 am i gonna drop to drop to eight And, well, we're just going to see the grief right away. Firing it off, making sure there's no shenanigans. I don't think Emma can really do anything in response. No point in Apostle's Blessing. I imagine you just take the pick your poison and then ephemera, and that's kind of the game. I think you might take Slick Shot Show Off to cut off. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, you, you should definitely take pick your poison. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I... yeah, BBD is thinking over the options. Does go with the pick your poison. 
And now I imagine it's probably going to be the ephemerate. Might as well keep that big old Atroxa around. And so what can Emma draw here? I guess, I mean, I don't know how realistic it is. Another pick your poison, I guess, could snipe the Atroxa. But at this point, the damage might be a little bit done. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it's way overdone. Like, BB is at 18. Now he could just be an Esper Control. Yeah, Emma doesn't even really want to play more. I can't really blame her. Uh, uh yeah. Games were 